So we are now recording. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Benefits Trust uh, Spring Zoomcast series. My name is Robert Crowder. I'm going to be uh, the presenter today. An exciting day ahead of us. First day of June, an absolutely gorgeous day. I'm glad to see everybody uh, here and more people will be joining throughout the call, which is great. I see them coming in now. Um, I want to uh, take this opportunity to welcome you on behalf of all of us at the Benefits Trust. A couple of uh, folks are joining us from the Benefits Trust. Carrie Lane is here. Gary, give us a wave. Mike Ignatz is here. And uh, Robert Crowder, son, junior, is here as well. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, throughout the presentation today, if you have any comments or any questions or anything, throw them in the chat box, raise your hand, uh, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. We'd love to uh, hear from you. Um, so raise your hand um, and uh, uh, raise your hand or, or put it in the chat box. And Mike and Carrie and uh, uh, Rob are going to be monitoring that. Let me share my screen if I could for our presentation today. Share screen. Okay, everybody can see that. I'm going to go under play mode. Everybody can see that well? Yep. Awesome. So today we're going to talk about the power of conversations, how discussions create great, great solutions for your client. Uh, and then I added this line, you know, great conversations eliminate your competition. And that's something I strongly believe. Uh, you know, we live in a competitive world, but I think great conversations uh, that you have with your prospects and your clients really eliminate your competition. You separate yourself from uh, from the rest when you have great conversations. So today's presentation is based on that. At the end of the presentation today, you're going to get a CE credit for participating. Mike's going to be sending that out. You're going to be signed up for our Trusted Advisor newsletter Um uh, which is going to, uh, if you're not already signed up for that, you will get that on a monthly basis. Lots of great, valuable information in there. Uh, as well as that, you're going to get a really short survey. And the survey takes less than a minute to complete. Please fill it out, send back, tell us how we did today, tell us how we can do tomorrow or how we can do better tomorrow. And as well as that, give us some ideas on future topics that you'd like to see covered because we want to make this of value to you. And as a matter of fact, the presentation we did on Tuesday with, with uh, respect to healthcare spending accounts was a, a direct result from feedback from yourselves. And uh, the conversation today is, is a direct result of feedback that we've received over the last couple of uh, months. So really what we want to focus on today is how to have great conversations with your client um, and prospects so you can eliminate your competition and add value. So our agenda today, and, and this is based on uh, uh, our presentation, of course, but it's also based on what uh, our friends at the regulatory boards think that we need to have in an agenda to, in order to make it eligible for CE credit. But we want to talk about what the foundation of a great discussion is. Uh, we want to talk about client needs analysis, who benefits from great discussions. Uh, where do you have great discussions? When is the best time to have great discussions? Why are great discussions so vital? We want to talk about a couple of case studies. We've got three different case studies we want to share with you. And we certainly want to talk about tax, accounting, and reporting considerations, and then, of course, have a discussion. If we do run out of time today, we're going to stay on the call for a few minutes afterwards. Um, but if you need to leave right at 10, uh, 11 o'clock, then that's fine, too. And your CE credit will be sent. But if you want to have a more in-depth discussion about what we've presented today or anything else for that matter, we're happy to uh, to do so. So again, thank you very much for coming. Point of view. Uh, I always like to start off with this to talk about the marketplace and the point of view and where we're coming from. There are 450,000 businesses in, in Southern Ontario or in Ontario right now. It's amazing when you think about it. There's 450,000 businesses 440 of those business, 440,000 of those businesses have less than 100 full-time employees. Canada's made up of a whole bunch of small business. Uh, and, and that's not something new. But when you look at that number of 440,000 businesses, uh, you know, in, in, in Ontario, and the majority of those are, you know, south of Barrie, south of Guelph, south of Kitchener, south of, of Oshawa and Bowmanville and so on. Uh, there's just an incredible opportunity. And something else when we were putting this presentation together that I found is, is Toronto has more cranes in use right now than most U.S. cities combined. There's 208 cranes happening right now uh, or being used right now to build things in Toronto. Uh, and that's more than New York, L.A., San Francisco, Washington combined. Right. So you think about all these big centers that are out there and, and we've got more cranes. So the GTA 
uh, you know, Southern and Central Ontario really is where the money is. I don't care what anybody says. I think it's the best time to sell group insurance right now. It's where the money is. There's a huge, uh, uh, you know, strain on talent and and everybody's looking for new employees. Everybody's looking for skilled employees and so on. And as a result of that, benefit plans are a big component of, of attracting and retaining employees. And I think today is the best time to sell group insurance in Ontario, especially with what's going on. Uh, other considerations, you know, what we really want to talk about today is, is how we can provide value-added service at a profit. Key thing there is profit. You need to make money. As a professional advisor, you need to make money. It's as simple as that. So how do we provide value-added service at a profit? With endless prospects in the, in the uh, um, you know, through, the, through your glasses, it's endless prospects in the GTA and, and Southern and Central Ontario. And through this lens, we're going to explore. And it's, one thing that I remember uh, I, I, was my father said, you know, many, 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 many years ago, um, he was looking at some files and he goes, you know, thin files are often more profitable than thick files. You think you're busy with a process or a client because you've got a really thick file and there's a whole bunch of transactions back and forth. Well, he goes, thin files are a lot more profitable. And I never forgot that. And, and it's really what we want to talk about today is how to have thin files uh, as opposed to thick files because those are the most profitable for you and you can still add a great deal of value. A little bit of a disclaimer, Benefits Trust started on January 1st, 1994. We're a full service third party benefit administration company. Um, we work with advisors like you. Our target market is, is really advisors with clients with less than hundred employees. This is the space we work in. This is where the money is. This is the space we work in. We do have clients that are larger than that as far as employee count goes, but our target market is really working with advisors like you um, that have companies with less than 100 employees. These are our views and our opinions, right? Yeah, you can. I love to have smart people that disagree with me, but these are our views and our opinions. Um, and I can easily say that I've had well over 10,000 sales meetings in this space in my 30-year career, 33-year career. Uh, this is not a commercial for the benefits trust. It's just you know some thoughts and wisdoms and ideas that I've got. Um, but uh, it, it's interesting because there's a lot of things that are changing out there. There's an awful lot of things that are changing out there. I know we talked about healthcare spending accounts on Tuesday, but just the fact that we've had more conversations about healthcare spending accounts in the last five years than in the previous 20 years, I think it makes a point. Employers, plan sponsors, prospects, clients, they're, they're, they're looking for information. They're looking to you for advice and direction and leadership. Um, and, and just this change of five in the last five years, just people asking about different things, uh, I think it really proves the point. So we want to talk about uh, client needs analysis. Who benefits from great conversations? You know, you can have great conversations all over the place, but who benefits from the great conversations? Well, you as a professional advisor, let's put you forward first. Who benefits from great conversations? Right. You do as a professional advisor. You benefit from these great conversations because you have more profitable relationships. And you look back at your stable of clients and you look back at your prospects over the years. And those that you, I think that you've really connected with and you've had these great conversations with are the most profitable clients. And clients where you've got thick files, right? You probably haven't had some great conversations with them. It's probably a little bit frustrating, right? As well as that, the client benefits from, uh, uh, the client benefits from great discussions because they can receive a great deal more value providing they're open to it, right? So you benefit from it and the client benefits from it. So if you benefit from it and the client benefits from it, it's best to enter into relationships uh, where you can have great discussions. You can't always have great discussions, but what I'm saying is you benefit more together when you have great discussions. Um, who benefits from great discussions? Well, you need to know where your client is going in order to best uh, best to help, uh, find out the best way to help them. Or even if you want to help them, you may not want to know, or you may, when you find out where they're going, you may not want to be part of that. Uh, but, but it's important to understand where the client is going so you can best help them. If you don't know where they're going, you can't help them, right? You can guess, but you really can't help them, right? And how do you know where your client is going to go? And, and you know, you got to ask. It's as simple as that. You've got to ask, and you've got to ask future-based questions. Remember, selling, and that's what we're you know, ultimately here talking about when we're talking about benefits to a great extent, it's selling is engaging someone in a future result that is good for them. 
You're engaging someone in a future result that's good for them, not a past result, but a future result. So you have to ask future-based questions. And without a doubt, something that has really changed my, my, my trajectory with respect to sales and, and acquiring clients is a question that I learned from Dan Sullivan from The Strategic Coach, and it's quite simple. But if we were meeting here three years from now and you were looking back over those three years, what has to have, have happened for you to say it's been the best three years of your life? You're asking your client or prospect to put themselves in the future, to turn around and look back and say, hey, I just had three great years. What's happened for those to be the best three years of my life? So you're asking a future-based question. And it's interesting because when you when you find out the answers to the question, often the, the, the client is going to ask these questions or is going to answer this question with about a 20-minute dialogue. And they're going to tell you where they're going. They're going to give you a clear roadmap of where they're going, as a matter of fact. And you haven't even mentioned benefits at this point. But you're going to get a clear, concise, and specific answer. You're going to, they're going to tell you whether they're going to grow, whether they're going to sell, whether they're going to merge, whether they're going to enter into new markets, whether they're going to develop new products. They're going to tell you where they're going to go. They're going to give you a clear roadmap. They're going to give you a GPS on where they're going. And that's going to be the foundation of how you can help them. And it's interesting because if they don't engage with you, they go, oh, you know what? I don't want to get into this. I don't have time for this. Uh, I just can hear here's some stuff. Can you just give me a benefits quote? Right. My attitude, there's 440,000 prospects. If they don't want to engage with you and you can't have great conversations next. Right. Or make sure your eyes are open without a doubt. But if they don't want to engage with you and, you know, they're just looking for a cheaper price. I think there's more prospects in the world. I think you need the roadmap. You know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, my wife and I were uh, in Italy. And if we didn't have a map, we would just be driving around in circles. The roads there are crazy. Right. We, we drove 16 or 1800 kilometers. But if we didn't have a map or a GPS and didn't have a destination of where we were going, we would never have gotten there. Right. So it's important to ask future based questions to determine the best way to get there. And that's the best part about client needs analysis. So what is the foundation for great discussions? Well, clear communication, active listening, respectful attitude, shared purpose. Preparation. I think these are the foundations. I really spent a lot of time thinking about this. And the foundation for a great discussion are all of these things. You know, you can get so much information off the internet. You can get so much information off the internet. But one thing that you can't have on the internet is a great discussion. You just can't do that. You can have all the AI in the world. Write me a thousand word essay on this or write me a newsletter on that. Right, you you can type that into your to your uh, you know what is it chat GBT or whatever it is. But one thing that it doesn't do is have great discussions. So great discussions, I think, is the difference. That's the human aspect of life, right? And you got to have that clear communication, that active listening, respectful attitude, shared purpose, and preparation. So clear communication, clear communication, organized thoughts, Right. Organized thoughts. So if we were meeting here three years from today, what has to have happened for you to say it's been the best three years of your life? Take notes. Right. Take those notes. Organize those notes. Simple language. You know, simple language. We use too many TLAs in this business. Everybody know what a TLA is? Three letter acronyms. Right. <laughs> we use too many, too much insurance ease. We don't want to talk about insurance. They know that you're the expert. You don't want to talk about necessarily insurance, premiums and deductibles. And, oh, uh, we want to deal with Sun Life because they use the GAM 83 unisex mortality table. Clear communication, simple language, right? And it's interesting. I don't know if anybody's um, watched the show uh, Suits. Some of it's filmed in Toronto. Uh, it's a lawyer show. and and But you, all, you people have seen... TV shows and lawyers in TV shows are not using lawyer language. They're using very simple language to get their point across to their, their clients. And often these things are happening in, uh, you know, on the street corner or in a boardroom or wherever they're having these conversations, but they're using very simple language. They don't cite laws and, and penal codes and so on, right? It's very simple language. Consider your audience. Your audience is not an insurance expert. So you got to consider your audience. I like to use context and examples and analogies, right? I really like to use analogies. That's just who I am. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's a similarity. It's a similar thing, right? But use simple language, examples and context and analogy. The other thing is, is 
uh, check for information or check for understanding, right? When, when, when you're talking, like ask them to clarify something, you, you can also say, Hey, do you understand this? Like, I'm, I'm trying to make a point, but you do you want, you know, an understanding check for understanding can come from a number of different ways. It be, can become from, yes, I understand this. Somebody saying that or body language, their heads nodding up and down, right? They're understanding it. They're getting on to the next point. They get it. Remember, you know, when we're talking about clear communication, right? People can argue facts. People can argue facts all day long. I can say, you know what? Canada Life is the best insurance supplier in the world. And the reason is, and I can list out a whole bunch of reasons. You guys can argue that. You can argue that all day long. If Dave Patrick was on the phone and I said Manual Life was the best uh, insurance provider in the world, he would argue that all day long. But stories, people argue facts, they listen to stories. So that's why I'm saying in clear communication, simple language, organized thoughts, consider your audience. They're not insurance experts. Use simple language. It's as simple as that. Right? What's the great, great foundation for a uh, what's the foundation for a great discussion? Again, active listening. Be present, pay attention, be present, right? Don't get confused or, or, or distracted by outside distractions. I have my phone, it's right here. I'm using it as a timing device for today's presentation, but guess what? It's on airplane mode. It's on airplane mode right now. I'm not gonna get a telephone call. I'm not gonna get a buzz, you know, with a text. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Is, my phone's not going to vibrate beside me. I'm not going to be distracted by it, right? When you walk into a meeting with a client, keep your phone in your pocket, put it on airplane mode before you walk in. That's my advice, right? Because nothing is nothing is is uh, more distracting than, oh, I've got my phone on the desk here. We're having a conversation. And all of a sudden, I'm looking over at my phone. Oh, it's not that. Oh, uh, uh, I'll get that later, right? You know, it, you're distracted. You're not showing the the client or the prospect, the respect that they deserve, right? So pay attention, be present. Avoid making assumptions or jumping to conclusions. We're all guilty of this. The client starts telling you a story or starts telling you where they're at, and then all of a sudden you're jumping to the end of the story because you've heard it before. It's not always the case. Avoid making assumptions or jumping to conclusions. Ask checking questions, right? Ask checking questions. <coughs> Summarize, repeat back what the client has said in your own words. Just so I'm perfectly clear, David, uh, you've told me that your biggest fear is this, your biggest opportunity is that. Is that, you know, you're asking a check. Yeah, that's, you, David, yeah, perfect. Got, got it, thank you very much. Be empathetic. Understand your client's perspective and their feelings, right? Be empathetic. It's real to them. What their, what their feelings are is real to them. It may not be real to you, but it's real to them. And that's what's important. So yesterday I was in a meeting in Mark of one of my uh, uh, longest clients, one of our oldest clients. Um, I was in a meeting with him and we were talking and, and you know, I was, I was asking him some questions about what's going on in your life. And he was telling me about the difficulty that he is having getting a permit to do an extension on his third home not the third home he's owned, one of his two vacation homes. So for a lot of people, they'd be going, oh my God, that's ridiculous. That must be nice. It must be nice. Well, you know what? I've got no comment on his three homes or whatever he does with the money that he's earned. I don't have any comment on that. But I understand that dealing with bureaucratic organizations, especially municipalities, can be frustrating. You know, and I, uh, you, know, you repeat back and you say, yeah, that's got to be really frustrating. That's got to be incredibly frustrating. What has that done? It separated yourself from the competition. You're not talking about price of employee benefits. You're getting this understanding of where this particular client is coming from and what's important to them and what frustrates them. Well, you can draw that analogy. He's dealing with the municipality and having difficulty getting, getting, getting context, uh, uh, you know, getting an understanding. But you're, you're saying you understand this and they don't like bureaucracy. You know, remember that. Terrific. Right, respectful attitude, and that's going to go both ways. Celebrate what they what they have achieved, right? Celebrate what they have achieved. You know, over the last ten years, your your sales have gone from a million to ten million. Outstanding. Treat your client with that respect and dignity, and they've got to do the same. But remember, it's all about them. It's not about you, right? It's all about them. It's all about you. 
not about you, pardon me. Be curious, right? Be curious, ask questions. You know, the, I remember in insurance sales 101 when I started with Great West Life many years ago, you know, it was how did you get started in this business, right? That was the question that you were supposed to ask, but ask questions. You know, Av and I have known each other for many years. Av Kapoor and I have known each other for many, many years. I haven't seen you in a while, Av, but I remember your, your, your child going through medical school. How's your, you know, how's the doctor, right? You know, it's those types of questions. Acknowledge their thoughts and feelings, right? Acknowledge the thoughts and feelings. Uh, I can, I'm talking too much. I got to keep going here. We got lots of slides to get through. Um, what is the foundation for a great discussion? Shared purpose. Keep your eye on the prize. Remember, the eye on the prize is not necessarily something benefits right out of the gate, but I think it, what the eye on the prize is, is becoming the trusted advisor. You're applying for a job to become their trusted advisor, right? You got that same mission. They're looking for a trusted advisor. You got to keep your eye on the job to become that trusted advisor. Show alignment, circle back. Again, those checking questions. But remember, great discussions are awesome, but they you know, create happy relationships and that drives performance. This is something that is, is, is I'm so passionate about. Be prepared. If you're not prepared, don't show up. If you're not prepared, do not show up. Do research. Research is so easy today. Research is simple. Go on the internet. Go on social media. Look for community involvement. Look for common interests. It's amazing on what you can find at at uh, uh, you know at different uh, from different places on the internet. What do what, what do the uh, younger kids call it now? Creep around. <laughs> it's it's called research. What? Creep around. Creep on someone's you know. LinkedIn page, creep on someone's, uh, uh, you know, Facebook page or whatever they've got on uh, their Instagram, right? But it's amazing because you can find out what communities they're involved in. You can find some common interests, right? It just creates that next level, right? It creates that next level. Oh, hold on a second. I think I forgot. No, oh, no. Where we go? Sorry. What sort of questions to ask? Well, they've got to be future-based questions. Again, selling is engaging someone in a future result that's good for them. What's their business philosophy? What's their risk management philosophy? What business cycle is their business in? And what business cycle is their business in? Because different businesses have different business cycles, depending on the industry that they're in, right? Everything might be, if you're in the crane business, it's a good business to be in in Toronto, right? It's a really good business to be in Toronto. Tech, not so much right now. It's in a different business cycle. Right. The other thing I like to do is find out what relationships they have with other professionals. Who's their accountant? Who's the lawyer? How long have they been dealing with these particular accountants and lawyers? Do they change every year or two? Or do they have they been dealing with accountants and their lawyers, you know, for the last 20 years? You know, they value relationships. Right. So it's important to understand, you know, what sort of questions to ask, but they all have to be really future based questions. Where do you have great discussions? Well, the answer is anywhere. You know, anywhere, as long as they're ready and willing to engage. And I've got a picture of a chairlift here, and I've had lots of great discussions on chairlifts with people. Uh, and generally speaking, they're willing to engage. You got 15 minutes on the chairlift, you can't go anywhere, right? But uh, be respectful of their time. I love to ask the question, how much time do you have today? Hey, you know, Mr. Prospect, how much time do you have today? Or I promised that we'd spend 10 minutes together. Right. So I'm going to keep to that 10 minutes and I start my timer. Right. Ask permission. Is it OK if I ask you some questions? Right. Is it OK if I ask you some questions? Be positive all the time. Energy, positive energy works. I am positive all the time, even when I'm having not a great day. Right. I barely even share that with my spouse. I barely share that with Michelle. Right. Sometimes she can tell, but I try to be positive all the time. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I am positive all the time. Show genuine interest. You know, these are all things that sometimes we forget, but you got to show genuine interest. Tell me, you know, the example I use, you're, 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 you're doing this extension on your country home in, in Collingwood. Uh, you know, tell me about it. Tell me more about it. What are you going to put in your, your, your extension? You know, you show that general. Well, thank you for sharing. It's a great way to say thank you. Thank you for sharing. Everybody likes to share. Share in the sandbox. Remember when you were a kid, you share in the sandbox, right? Thank you for sharing. Thank them for sharing, right? Uh, 
when is a great time to have a, a, a great discussion? Well, whenever, wherever, and whenever, and wherever they want, and, and they are, and you and they are available, right? You can have great discussions. They don't necessarily have to be long. You don't have to spend an hour together or two hours together or three hours together. They can be very short, but you can have very meaningful interactions. And I like to say every chance you get, you know, every chance you get, whether it's, you know, on an airplane, whether it's on a golf course, whether it's in their office, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a formal situation, right? It's every chance you get, you know, discussions don't have to be super long to be effective. Right? They don't have to be long to be effective. And remember, communication is the result. Effective communication is the result. If you get a good result, you've communicated effectively. Communication is the result. The point I, I, I like to make in the thought, the story that I got about discussions don't have to be long to be effective. If anybody's seen the movie The Godfather, um, you know, the Godfather gets shot. Michael uh goes and shoots the uh uh the the other member of the Barzino family or whatever it was and the police officer and they get shipped off to Sicily and the father's recovering and they, they all walk into the uh uh they all walk, he, the the godfather gets home to recover and the kids are there greeting him and everybody's there greeting him and all of a sudden he asks his son where's Michael right so he you know this is a meaningful conversation he goes where's Michael you know where's Michael right and then all of a sudden uh, um James Kahn goes, Michael's gone to Sicily or whatever he said. And then you see the Godfather just raise his hand and go, you know, everybody out. It's a very short scene, but the communication is very effective. He just raises his hand and the conversation's over and everybody's out, right? So it's, you want to have meaningful discussions all the time, right? There are time to have meaningful discussions, but it's wherever they want and whenever they're available, right? That's important. So case studies, I want to jump into these. Case studies, uh, uh, we've got a couple of case studies that we want to share with you, um, but I, I call the first one that that uh, um, I want to share, family with multiple businesses. Uh, I got, this is a direct client of ours. First of all, we sell our, our solution at the Benefits Trust, our full service third party benefit administration solution through advisors like you. We started, as I mentioned, on January 1st, 1994. On January 1st, 1994, I was selling direct to end user clients. And um, then on, on April 1st, 2001, we made a decision that we were gonna sell through advisors. It was as simple as that. We were gonna sell direct through advisors. We were no longer gonna sell uh, direct to end user clients. So we still have some legacy business. This is one of the these cases that's a legacy business. I got, um, I got introduced to this particular family because we were dealing a lot in the hotel industry. Uh, and one of the brothers owned this hotel, and I got uh, introduced to these guys as a uh, as a referral. So I went and saw the one brother and um, had a meaningful, very, very meaningful discussion when I first met with him. We spent about an hour, and he knew that I was there to talk about benefits, or he knew that we were there to talk about benefits, but we didn't talk an awful lot about benefits, right? We just had this incredible, meaningful discussion, and I was fascinated with his family story. They... There's five brothers in this particular uh, uh, family. Um, they came from Macedonia. When the my main contact, or the original contact, uh, uh, came over on a ship when he was 15 years old. His father came over a year earlier. His mom made the journey when uh, with the five boys. And uh, the second oldest brother was 15. That's the one that I'm dealing, or I started to deal with. Uh, there was one that was 17, and then they went down to five years old. So you, can you imagine a mom, you know, with just a few suitcases, making this journey all the way from, from Macedonia into Toronto through Halifax um, and hopping on a, a train in Halifax and getting to Toronto to meet up with her husband who, had, who they haven't seen in a year. Anyways, gets, gets to Toronto, and they're staying with their cousin. So all of a sudden, here comes mom and five boys, and they're staying with their cousin, and their their the older cousin comes home, and he was a shoe shine boy on uh, Danforth Avenue. And he came home, and he had all this cash in their in their hand. These guys were dirt poor, and he came over with all the cash in there, all this cash in his hand. And he goes, "Oh my God, I'm 15 years old. I want to be a shoe shine boy." The next day, he went to work, and his older brother went to work with him, and they started off being shoe shine boys. 
this was just fascinating to me. This came out over discuss, a meaningful discussion that I had with them right out of the gate, right? And it was just a heartwarming story, a heartwarming story. It was amazing. And then I found out during that discussion and, and towards the end of the discussion that they've built up this incredible business. And five brothers, they're all entrepreneurs. Five brothers each run a profit center. Uh, they each run a profit center. One of them's in the hotel business and they've got other businesses for other reasons. But they've got, I found out they've got different core plan designs for each company. So each company has their own benefit plan. And they've got five different contracts um, and it was spread out over three different insurance companies. I think the, back in the day, there was two, two of them with Great West Life and, and, spread out, and the others spread out over the other uh, insurance companies. Um, each brother is in their own company's profit center's benefit plan. And the, the, th the thing that's amazing about this family is the brothers share equally in, in the combined profits. So some businesses are bigger than other businesses, but they just put all the profits together and then write it, you know, divide by five and write checks. So is it really, you know, family is critical to these folks. So I learned a number of things. You know, I learned their entrepreneurial spirit. I know their work determination, uh, their work, ethics and and how strong they are with respect to family and how important family is so the the solution that we came up with you know after working with them for a little while is we wanted to keep the creative plan design for each unique business because each unique business they were in very different industries one was uh you know as i mentioned in the hotel industry and, and there was manufacturing and there was some uh, uh, professional services and service related industries. So they, they really had different needs. If you put one plan design in for everybody, it wouldn't work. Talent retention was important because of those family values. They wanted people to work for them forever. Uh, they, they had their arms around their employees. Um, talent retention was, was critical. Um, so we put in this, this great plan design that was different for everybody. But what we did is we purchased the life insurance, the AD&D, the long-term disability, the critical illness, the stop loss, and the out-of-country coverage. We purchased that in bulk, uh, which showed a great deal of value. Uh, the extended health care and dental care uh, was, was different for each of the groups. Uh, and so they had multiple groups with multiple different plan designs. It was all set up through one contract, but we accounted for them each individually. The, the pooled insurance rates were spread across each business unit uh, because of the common ownership, but we were listing in the contracts of insurance all of the different companies associated with them. We also created a family class with 100% unlimited coverage. Money wasn't the issue. It was the coverage that was the issue for the owners. Took them out of their company profit plan and put it into their family plan with 100% coverage. Um, and, and there was no coinsurances, maximums, deductibles, Right. And uh, we also separated the family group for budgeting purposes because we knew their rates over time were going to be considerably higher than uh, than the profit centers. rates. So they didn't want to taint the profit center because, you know, somebody one of the family members spent a lot of money. They didn't want to taint the the uh, uh, what am I looking for? The, the pure profit in each of those centers, as well as that. Uh, we, we send a report so they can do some internal equalization on uh, depending on what the claims are for the family class. So it worked out well. Uh, and this was set up some 25 years ago or more now, and now that I think about it, and uh, it's it's worked like that. Now we've done tweaks to the benefit plans over the years, but it's worked and worked extraordinarily well. Each plan design reflects the needs of each profit center. So again, it's not one corporate, one size fits all. It's each plan design reflects the profit center. Uh, advantageous pooled rates for all benefits. The family uses that 100% unlimited plan. They go to MedCan Clinic. Some of them go to Cleveland Clinic, et cetera. Now it's interesting. Uh, uh, the second generation is now involved in the active plan. Now there's 20 plus members in the family plan because the families keep on growing. Um, and it's interesting because the, uh, the, the brothers are now retiring. But you never really retire, right? But now they're retiring and they're not as active in the business as they once were. And it's fascinating because, you know, that you you always get nervous or not nervous, but you always get a little bit nervous when they, you know, it, it changes generations, a business changes generations. And I've been working, you know, with the family for so long that, that the, the, uh, um, the recommendation came down from the, the senior uh, leader, if you would, of this family. And he said, you guys need to listen to Rob and, you know, he's our guy. Everybody's got a guy. You know, I got a, 
I got an electrician. I got a guy. I need an electrician. I got a guy, right? You know, everybody's, he's, he's the benefits guy. We take care of their out of country travel coverage. We take care of all the stuff. He's the guy. And now we've introduced, you know, our second generation with, in this case, being Rob and Mike. Uh, so they're active in the relationship as well, right? So it's, it's really having these deep discussions and these great discussions uh, to create that foundation, to be that trusted advisor, right? So you can have profitable, profitable cases. Do you think this case has been profitable over the last probably 30 years? Oh my gosh, has it been profitable, right? And rewarding, profitable and rewarding. And I can spend hours talking about this particular case. Another case, totally different perspective. I call this case icing on the cake. I call this case icing on the cake. This is one of my favorite, favorite uh, uh, cases because just the way it all happened. Um, well-known Canadian business, 500 plus employees, probably closer to 800 employees. Like well-known Canadian business, if if I mentioned this business to you, every single person on this call would be shaking their head up and down. Um, the company has a traditional plan in place with an active advisor. They've had one in place for years and years and years. Uh, there's a, six members of the C-suite, um, you know, the senior, senior management team, and the CEO has a unique benefit need. If I was to look at this case, an advisor brought me this case, uh, uh, Av, if he brought me this case with 500 employees, I'd say, you know what, we, unless they've got really unique needs, I'm not that interested because I, it's not our target market. But it was out of our target market, and it was out of the advisor's target market as well. Um, but the advisor had a very meaningful conversation on an airplane with the CEO. They were both flying back from Florida. She happened to, she was younger, a lot younger. She was flying back from her parents' place in Fort Myers, and he was flying back from his place in Fort Myers. And they got seated, seated beside each other on the three hour journey back from Fort Myers to Pearson. And they had a meaningful conversation. They had a really meaningful conversation. And the CEO was explaining his very unique benefits need. Um, then it was interesting because that conversation was deep but it really wasn't that long. They had a conversation that lasted about 15 minutes, telling her about what her, what his problem was. And then they, you know, watched a movie or did whatever they did. Right. And then she reached out to him after the, uh, after the flight had landed and, you know, a couple of days had passed, reached out to him and got in, got on the phone with him and said, I was the young lady that was sitting beside you on the airplane coming back from Fort Myers. And your con he said, I was thinking about our conversation and I have a way that I think I can help you. Do you have 10 minutes to spare or something along those lines? But people like to be helped. And he said, yeah, absolutely. I'll listen, right? Long and the short of it is I came in to the meeting with her and uh, we met this company in his boardroom. The CFO was in the meeting and his executive assistant was in the meeting. And we understood, we, we, she repeated back the story, right? Uh, about the active benefit need that this particular CEO has. It was crystal clear that they did not want to open up Pandora's back box and look at their, their 800 employees or 700 employees or whatever they were at the time. They didn't want to get HR involved. They didn't want anything to happen to their existing benefit plan. They didn't want to upset that apple cart. To move an 800 life case is ridiculous. It's a, it's a huge amount of time, right? Um, but it was decided and the solution was after meaningful discussion with the client, and this meaningful discussion, again, was relatively short in the grand scheme of things, right? Was Leave the existing plan with the, the same with the active advisor. It's working. Don't fix something that isn't broken, right? It's working. Let's take the C-suite executives and let's have them opt out of the existing plan, opt out of the health and dental coverage. Keep the pool benefits where they are. Act, opt out of the uh, health and dental coverage. Set up a separate plan with 100% unlimited coverage for all C-suite executives. So 100% reimbursement for all their medical and dental expenses, no co-insurances, no maximums, no deductibles. Report directly to the CEO and the executive assistant. So HR is not involved in this. This is completely confidential. HR is not involved in this. And it worked out that the annual plan contributions for these six employees and their families was $300,000 a year. They had some pretty significant issues. Now, 
um, it, it's it's all of a sudden this case is inside the advisor's target market. It's inside our target market, right? So this was uh, this case was put in place a number of years ago, right? But honestly, it was two very short but meaningful discussions because why the advisor was curious, the advisor was present, the advisor was interested, you know, was asking checking questions, all of those things that we talked about earlier in this presentation. The result was there was no disruption to the existing plan. The active advisor is really unaware of the plan. They may, you know, have asked why they're no longer uh, uh, part of the existing plan. Um, but I think HR just said, I don't know, it's something the C-suite is doing. Um, the benefit plan that is now in place for the C-suite executives matches their compensation objectives. These folks are making, you know, uh, when this was set up, they're making, you know, somewhere between five hundred and seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in salary plus uh, seven-figure bonuses. So th this match, you know, uh, buying twelve hundred dollar glasses is not out of the ordinary, right? Like the the benefit plan now matches the C-suite compensation objectives. The creative plan desire, uh, creative uh, advisor, the creative advisor had a meaningful conversation with the CEO on an airplane, as I mentioned. And this was a one meeting sale. Six people, $300,000 in premium contributions and a one meeting sale, right? I'll tell you, the, the, uh, one of the things that's really exciting is on this particular case is the advisor now personally deals with she's not she is not necessarily a benefits advisor but she's more of a uh, uh you know sells life insurance and investments and what have you benefits is just a sidebar for her but now the advisor deals personally with the six c suite executives and she's made serious serious money from this case whereas the other advisor which is a big corporate entity right in which we all know you know those big corporate entities the william mercers of the world and so on right they have no idea what's going on. They have no idea how much money this particular individual, this young lady has made. Uh, and they think they're doing a bang up job. But they missed this enormous opportunity because of, uh, of a conversation, a present conversation that, and a, a, that a curious advisor had. Right? So powerful, powerful. Case hey, study number three, uh, peaks and valleys. I call this one peaks and valleys. I uh, was brought into this case with an advisor. Uh, they had a routine plan design, a uh, very special, specially manufacturing facility. They're located in the uh, outskirts of the GTA. Uh, they're not in Toronto or Mississauga or Oakville. They're just a little bit outside of town. Uh, very industry specific. Uh, very, very, very industry specific. They're in the uh, aero, air, uh, airplane business, if you would. Uh, and they just make little parts for airplanes, but very highly trained staff. Um, they, they, you know, they have to have very specific specifications for the parts that they're building so they don't fail for obvious reasons, you know, look at the Challenger, uh, you know, when it blew up, but they've got worldwide clients. Um, you know, their clients are just simply all over the world. They just don't deal in, in, in Ontario. They deal right around the world. Uh, the owner of the company was always on an airplane going to different parts of the world for 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 meetings and conferences and so on. And when we got involved in the in this particular case, there was a worldwide uh, uh, industry recession impacting cash flow. They were in a recession. And because often their clients were very, very large companies, people that built jets, right? they, would pay in 60 days or pay in 90 days or pay in 120 days. And the orders were big. So their cash flow on this small business located outside of Toronto was, was challenged. And especially during this recession. So um, we were called in to see if we can find a cheaper plan. But what happened was we had a meaningful discussion. <laughs> there was a couple of other advisors that were brought in to uh, uh, quote on this benefit plan as well. But we didn't really say we've, I just remember we had a very meaningful discussion. We had a meaningful discussion about where they were going and what was going on and, and, and so on, where most people were just saying, hey, great, let me quote on your business and we'll see if we can get you a cheaper plan. We were finding out why they wanted a cheaper plan. And is this a permanent solution? No, it was a temporary solution. So this ongoing meaningful discussion, and, and it was just a very temporary solution or temporary problem that they had. 
you know, there was indications, early indications that the, the, the industry was going to come out of this recession. But because of where their business was in that industry cycle, it was a bit of a lag. So this was a two-year problem. So we took over their benefit plan. The result was after meaningful discussion, after having a meaningful discussion with this particular client, we were immediately cho chosen to, to work with them. We became their trusted advisor because of the discussions, right? Um, we immediately changed their benefit plan from 100% reimbursement to 70% reimbursement. Um, the executives, which there was only a few of them, were not because it was set up on a budgeted ASO basis. The executives were not claiming at this point in time. They were saying, hey, we're putting our brakes on this. We understand the cash flow issue. We're pu putting our, our brakes on this. Uh, there was, um, we, we were slowing down claims payment to preserve cash. So it was really interesting. As I like to say, we play good cop, bad cop. And we said this in the discussion. We have the ability to play good cop, bad cop. We can make this change. We can change the plan design. We'll communicate it clearly with your staff. And you can help with that communication saying, because we're in this recession and things are slowed down, cash flow issues, we're changing the plan and we're, we're hiring the benefits trust. What they didn't say was we were going to slow down claim payments. In other words, a claim comes in, we're not going to pay it right away because we're going to pay it when they have the cash available to them. We were working very, very closely with them. And it was interesting because we were playing good cop, bad cop. And I like to say to the client, we'll be the bad cop, but we've got broad shoulders. So tell your, your employees when they go, where's my money? And they complain to, to you, the owner of the business or the manager of the business. You say, I don't know. We just hired these guys. And you know what? They're, they're terrible. I'm going to get on them and, and, and I'm going to rip them a new one. You know, that type of conversation. But they knew what was going on. It was all about preservation of cash and preservation of pooled benefits because those are the most important. If someone walked across the road and got hit by a cement truck, he wanted to be able to deliver a check. If someone was totally disabled, he wanted to continue their paycheck. That was critical. But routine dental expenses wasn't as critical at that time. But again, this was a temporary two-year problem. And this came out of meaningful discussions. Well, it was interesting. The result was... The plan was preserved. They got through it. They got through it just as they predicted. They got through it. The monthly communication, you know, was maintained. We communi communicated frequently. We communicated all the time. Um, and but I was always praising him, him on his accomplishments. This was just a blip in the system. We were mature about it. We've been here long enough, right? You, we've all been through these types of things. You no, know, we're going to get through it. Awesome. You're doing a great job, right? Monthly communication was maintained. The recession ended. The benefits were reinstated to the previous levels. And all of a sudden, guess what? Our service got better. Shocking. <laughs> Our service got way better. 100% executive plan added. $500 healthcare spending account was added for the employees for thanking them for the uh, problems that, that, that occurred during that recession, quote unquote. The, and the problems in the poor service levels were manufactured. But the interesting thing was, is the client really valued that. He valued the relationship because of those discussions that we had, those meaningful discussions that we had. He valued the relationship. He never forgot it. He never forgot the value of being that trusted advisor. And I got a call from him a couple of weeks or a couple of months ago, and he was all excited because he had just finished the transaction and he sold his business for 30 million bucks. Right. And not only that, he said, you know, I'm excited and I'm going to be exiting the business, but uh, the new general manager has been hired by the company that has purchased this. And I have given them an enormous recommendation that they continue to do business with you. Uh, and we still have the client. Tax, accounting, and reporting considerations. Why great discussions are so vital. Well, you know what? Make sure you understand the tax rules about benefits. We haven't talked an awful lot about this, but as we all know that, you know, tax deductible expenses or uh, benefit plan costs are tax deductible expenses and benefits are received tax-free life insurance premiums are taxable, all of those things. But you got to know those backwards and forwards. You can never waive on those types of things. If you're having meaningful discussions, you've got to be able to know that stuff. Those are table stakes. You know, table stakes, like the kind you eat, but these are table stakes, the kind you got to have, <laughs> right? Uh, no surprises. The, the the important thing about, uh, uh, you know, about, about accounting and reporting considerations is no surprises. Um, Monthly reporting is something that we do for all of our clients. We do it uh, on a monthly basis to our end user clients and to the advisor. So there aren't any surprises, monthly reporting, annual renewals. And the reason why I put annual, annual renewals down here 
is I talked to a, uh, a client uh, of ours and the advisor uh, in eight years of having this particular client has never sent the renewal to the client. Never once sent the renewal to the client. So you got to do annual renewals. It's a snapshot on a point in time. I hate to use the word renewals because it means you can fire, you know, get fired. I, I, I just, annual review. It's a snapshot at a point in time. Here's what happened in the future. Here's what's happening today. This is what we're, or here's what happened in the past. Here's what's happening today. Let's predict what's going to happen in the future. Personally, myself, management summaries. On renewal reports, first paragraph, tell them the answer. Tell them what's going on in the management summary, four or five sentences or less, right? Be interested and, and be interesting, right? It's as simple as that. Be interested and be interesting. Every interaction you have, you can have a meaningful discussion. The majority of renewals that I've been involved in delivering over the last number of years, 33 years, um, we haven't gotten past the management summary. The case that I was talking about yesterday that I went and saw, uh, the case that I went and saw yesterday, uh, again, one of those legacy pieces of business. We had an hour and a half long meeting. We talked for less than 30 seconds about their benefit plan. Less than 30 seconds, right? Effective reporting with excellent ongoing conversations results in thin files and profitable long-term relationships, right? Great conversations eliminate your competition and never have a bad renewal ever again. I've never had a bad renewal. Has anybody here had to deliver a bad renewal? Crazy. I've never had to deliver a bad renewal because of the reporting that we do on a monthly basis. And I can share this, uh, you know, certainly with you, but we send a client a, a report on a monthly basis. They know exactly where they are at any point in time, right? They don't have to be benefit experts. They look at one number on the bottom line and they know exactly where they are. So there's not any surprises. They know if their costs are going to go up. They know if their costs are going to go down. The client at the end of the session yesterday that I was with that we talked to, you know, for 30 seconds about their benefit plan. At the end of the meeting, I was uh, uh, leaving him and I said, you know, his name is Bruce. I said, Bruce, I really want to thank you for your continued business after all these years. And, it, and he looked me dead in the eye as we were shaking hands. He goes, no, I want to thank you. All right. So it's those powerful, powerful discussions. And you got to have all the tools in place in order to have those things. Right. But again, it's using that simple language and being interested and asking checking questions, right? And being empathetic that I think is most important. Benefits is the easy part. That's the 5%. The 95% is the stuff you do around the benefits. So questions, answers, discussions. We've got a few minutes. Let me stop sharing so I can see you better. I don't know, where's my cursor? There it is. Let's see the cursor on this. Hold on a second. Thank you for attending. Oh, oh I'll escape up this way. There we go. Let me go back to Zoom so I can see you all. Any questions, any thoughts, any feedback? Am I crazy? Am I oh, nuts? You've explained very well, Robert. Thank you. All the important things. Yes, I fully agree with you on everything. Yep. When you look back at your files, and I'm talking to everybody. I'm not just talking to you, Av. Thank you very much for your comments. But when you look back on your files, you know, do you have thin files? And why are they thin? You know what I mean? You've got those great clients. It's like, I don't know if anybody golfs, but every once in a while, you hit that perfect seven iron. and It just feels so good, right? Uh, or in skiing, you make this perfect turn, and it just feels so good. Uh, and you've got that client relationship. It feels so good. Why is it so good? And how can I make that in, in all of my, uh, all of my um, uh, relationships, right? It's those powerful conversations that you have and, and, and everybody needs to have. Any other thoughts, ideas? Oh, Richard. Unmute yourself. There we go. Where'd you go? Richard, you had your hand up? I think he, I think he, instead of, uh, <laughs> instead of unmuting himself, I think he logged off. <laughs> oh, no, there he is. Richard, did you have a question? Un unmute yourself, Richard. Okay, Richard, unmute yourself. Click on your microphone. Probably better. There we go. That's better. Okay, good. 
this that you know, you you've been talking about the relationship with the client, and uh, I don't hear a lot of that conversation anymore. And I'm glad to hear you say it all about how important that that relationship is in in uh, a lot of cases you don't even talk about the business because when going through COVID and all that, we all jumped on Zoom. We all of a sudden had to have all, uh, everybody's meeting on Zoom. Some people have continued with it, and I still love the personal one-on-one -on -one relationship. And and uh, you hear you get so much information that way. I think the people that are staying on Zoom may be doing themselves a disservice. Get in front of the client if you can face to face. Oh, with, without a doubt, being in front of the client, and, and whether you're in front of the client or beside the client, or again, it's the my, my comments earlier, Richard, about the internet. You can get lots of information on the internet. The sales cycle has definitely changed. You get lots of information on the internet, okay? Yep. But what you can't get on the internet, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking like this through Zoom or, or talking direct. It is, I agree with you. I'm old school like you in the sense of you can get more information talking to the uh, client directly, but it's just a little bit more personal. Um, yep. But you can still do it over the internet, but it's about asking the right questions. You can engage with someone over the internet if you ask the right questions, right? And it's, it's about asking, you know, it's about being prepared and asking those right questions. They don't like it as much as you don't like. It. But again, it's that questions. The internet has the answers. It doesn't have the questions. Chat, GB, GBT or whatever it's called has the answers, but it doesn't have the questions. The questions are what's critical. The questions are what separates you from your competition. You ask the right questions and you have the, the, those future-based questions and you have that meaningful discussion is what separates you from your competition. Majority of people are walking into a case and they're going, hey, awesome. Uh, let me give you a quote. Let me give you a quote and tell you, how, uh, tell you how we can save you some money. Well, all right, right, terrible. Ask some great questions. But the other thing is what's most important, be present. You know, phone didn't vibrate once because it's on airplane mode, you know. Be present. Uh, one thing I, one of my notes that I wrote down here that I forgot to mention. Has anybody ever, you ever talked to anybody, any of your friends or associates or people you hang out with at clubs or wherever you hang out, the bar you hang out with, wherever you hang out, you know, you go, hey, Shannon, how are you today? And they, their answer is, oh my God, just super busy. Super busy. Don't ever say that. It's like saying I'm super busy, but I'm making time to see you. No. Hey, I'm, I'm fantastic. You'd be positive. I'm fantastic. You know, and how are you? And, and, but say it in such a way that, you know, it's meaningful. What's new in your life? What's changed since we last met? You know, tell me where, you know, where are you going on your next vacation? I don't know. Just simple things. It's conversation about their future. Where are you going on your next vacation? Tell me about that. Why are you choosing there? Have you been to Northern Italy before? No. Okay. Fantastic. Right. What do you hope to see there? These are great questions. One of the tools that we have is 101 great questions. It's on our website. But Mike, when we send out the CE credits, can we uh, send out a link or or that uh, 101 questions, great questions? Yeah, absolutely. We'll yeah, send so that. we'll send a link out. So what it is, is uh, we asked advisors a number of years ago to give us their feedback on what the three great questions were. And uh, we put, first of all, we got all those questions back. We summarized them. We corrected the spelling mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we we put them in a you know some type of a logical order and, and we've got this great tool so we'll share that with everybody john kovats how are you you got a question and then we got to wrap things up i'm good rob uh thanks for your session as long as i've been kicking around this business i find that i look forward to your uh seminars because i'm continually learning and opening my mind on things thank you um the one thing that I think we all enjoy, I know I find interesting is you've talked over the, the while the different seminars you do about the groups within the groups. Yeah. And your case studies today are excellent in terms of opening my mind and I'm sure other people's minds about a six person executive group within a 600 employee company that there's a group there within a group and you just wrote a new group on six people and it just as what a group, I do what a group more, more business with you, yeah, as I do more business and tend to in the future, I'm finding that whatever I need, you can do. Well, thank you. Period. I appreciate it. 
I appreciate it. Story. And by the way, John is so not it's a, not... John's not a paid advocate of the benefits trust, so I want to put that perfectly <laughs> clear. So thank you. Anyways, it's eleven o'clock, okay. folks. It's eleven o'clock. So we'll stick around for a few minutes afterwards if anybody wants to. But on behalf of all of us at the benefits trust and Mike and Carrie and Rob that are here on the call today, uh, thank you very much. Mike's going to send you out some CE credits. We're going to send you a very short survey. Please fill it out. Respond back. You're going to be signed up for our trusted advisor newsletter. If we are doing business together, thank you very much for your continued business. If we are not doing business together, we'd love to, and we'd love to have some great discussions on where your business is going. Reach out anytime. Again, visit thebenefitstrust.com and uh, check us out. And uh, we're going to be doing a session. I believe it's next week. Uh, we've got a special guest, Dave Wochuk from Claim Secure is going to be joining us and he's going to be talking about drug management within a benefit plan, um, specifically uh, formulary and formulary protect plus, and then how that fits into a benefit plan uh, promise. So uh, exciting times. So lots of good stuff going on. It's the first day of June. The sun is shining. Enjoy your day out there. I wish you continued success in selling and having great conversations with your current and future clients. Thanks for your time. Bye for now. I'm going to stop recording. Okay. Bye. Bye.